Welcome to season two of my podcast show, Heading to the Holy Land, how to prepare, plan, and pray for a life-changing journey. Everything you need to know to bring your group to Israel. But where do you start? What do you need to know? What must you do and when and how? Heading to the Holy Land podcast lays it all out for you simply and clearly, step by step. This podcast will equip you with all the practical information to enjoy a landmark journey of faith and heart. We will talk about everything you need to know. We will talk about financial planning, travel pointers, important legal matters, what to wear, ethical and even cross-cultural considerations, and many, many more things. Drawing on decades of my experience as a professional tour guide, in Israel, I will answer all your questions, even the ones you might not think to ask. Hello everyone, welcome back. In this podcast, we will give a general introduction about Twin Tours and travel. We will talk about Twin Tours' mission statement, we will talk about the vision of Twin Tours, and at the end of this podcast, we will introduce for you the team one by one. Twin Tours and Travel is a local Christian travel agency specializing in building customized tour packages to the Holy Land. You will experience the Bible's living history at first hand as you retrace the path of the patriarchs and walk in the footsteps of Jesus. It is our aim that you and your fellow travelers will gain greater insights into the scriptures as you connect with the land and the local body of Christ. It has been both humbling and a privilege to see numerous lives transformed as our groups experience the God of the Scripture on a deep personal level through the intentional interaction with the land of the Bible. Our mission statement is to provide a journey of identity through learning the culture, the customs, and the context of Scripture through Jesus' Middle Eastern eyes, mind, and heart. From our experience for more than 20 years, teaching Scripture and making tours, most people leave this land changed forever. For those who have never been to Israel, it is hard to describe how much of a difference it makes to come and stand in the land of the Bible and see it for yourself. We have often heard it described as suddenly seeing in color after living in a world of black and white. The West is black and white. Yes or no? The Middle East is in colors. Maybe we will see in God's willing. There is no doubt that coming to the Holy Land will inject new life into the faith and into your Christian walk and into the lives of each tour participant and unveil a new appreciation for his words. We focus so much in our teachings on the cultures, on the customs and in the context of scripture that it will become so much vivid and alive to you. And in addition to offering biblical study tours, we also offer a variety of tours, each with a different focus. We offer the following seven types of tours. Number one, biblical study tours for pastors and for special people who want to understand the Bible in a deeper way. It's customized tours, but it's very much into the scripture and the Bible. Second, we offer faith pilgrimage tours for a lot of people that come and with the churches that visit the Holy Land. Thirdly, we offer like services for and ministry projects for volunteers to come and join a local ministry or a local church and serve them. Number four, we offer intercessory prayer journeys and tours for people and churches who just want to come and pray for the people. And the fifth tour, we offer personally customized, specialized 
themed or concept tours according to the vision of the church, specifically according to what the pastor needs to fulfill in the land of Israel. And the last thing, seventh kind of tour, we do conferences and we do concerts or musical concerts. There are some groups come to Israel and they do music and they do concerts in different places. I would like to share with you Twin Tours vision statement. We pursue unity between the Western and Eastern churches by building bridges in personal interaction between the living stones in Israel to foster relationships of mutual blessings and understanding between them. Through personal experience, God gives revelation of his heart for every tongue, tribe, and nation with mature the body of Christ in bringing reconciliation, unity, and the testimony that Jesus is Lord. To achieve these goals, we invite groups to experience the Holy Land and its people in depth from an indigenous evangelical Christian perspective. When you come to tour, you don't only see sites, but you meet with locals. So come, join us in bringing your prayers to bring life to the local people and the local communities in both Israel and Palestine. Let me share with you in more details about our vision statement. Twin Tours, we pursue a real unity, which does not imply becoming agreeing on everything. Real unity recognizes that no man or culture is an island. We each have strengths and weaknesses, and we benefit from the diversity. When we achieve unity, that produces mutual blessings. Achieving unity requires a revelation from God on three levels. Number one, awareness. God reveals to us that there are Christians from a completely different culture and with a completely different history, Middle Eastern Christians. I will categorize into three points, A, B, and C, of awareness. A. Awareness begins with realizing that there are Palestinian Christians which are not Muslims background believers, but rather Christians from birth and often from many generations, and they belong to the early church. And me, as a Maronite indigenous Christian, is one of them. We belong all the way back to the first century, even earlier in history. We are the locals. B. Awareness continues with the revelation that Jesus didn't give his disciples the King James Bible with his words in red. Jesus spoke Hebrew and Aramaic. Middle Eastern Christians today speak the same Semitic languages of Aramaic, Hebrew, and also later Arabic. C. Awareness ultimately includes revelation that Jerusalem is the birthplace of all Christianity and not the Western nations, which receive the most media attention. There is something holy and rooted about Eastern Christianity that Western Christianity only vaguely knows about it. Now, point number two. Understanding God reveals the culture and history of these Middle Eastern Christians and gives you the ability to see how they see. So when they, you come to the Holy Land, you will understand Jesus in the Middle Eastern eyes. You see Jesus in his context. Their perspective of the scripture becomes one in which we understand and can also access. So it's reconciliation. And number three, appreciation. God reveals his heart for the Middle Eastern Christians and the beauty he sees in that culture and that perspective. The co-founder, like Tony, my brother, like to say, we still carry the smell of Christ in our lives. It may be different, and because it's foreign, that smell may not appeal at first, but with understanding and connecting, a level of unity can be achieved 
which produces appreciations for the Middle Eastern Christians and the smell of Christ still presents in our culture. As a result of appreciations, I'd like to talk about three points will happen. A, B, and C. A. Appreciation begins with humility of seeing weaknesses in one's own culture perspective that could be strengthened in the other culture perspectives. Just be so much open-minded. B. Appreciation also realizes that Eastern Christianity may look very different and have many weaknesses, but the strength of the Western Christianity has to offer must come from a place of service and not superiority. C. Appreciation also includes a decision not to vilify any of the groups in the Middle East, Jews or Palestinians. The saying is, if you choose side, you will lose. So don't choose sides. Be humble and learn from both sides and listen to both sides. This is my humble advice. Now, when unity takes place, it's very hard and have a price. But the Western and Eastern churches, which Twin Stores is trying to unify, has also many distinct differences. As I mentioned previously, it is to be aware of these differences, understand these differences, and ultimately appreciate these differences. Here are some of the noteworthy differences. Let me talk first about the Western Christianity. The Western Christianity is a language of Romance. English, Spanish, Latin. The Eastern Christianity is a Semitic language. It's Aramaic. It's Hebrew. It's Arabic. It's much more foundational. It's much more solid. You think from your right brain in these Semitic languages. You write from right to left. Not like the Western Christianity. Western Christianity is so organized. Eastern Christianity is relational. It's all about relationships. When you read scripture, you read the Bible as a revelation. Western Christianity, it's all about individualistic approach. It's all about me. It's all about how God can bless me, bless me, bless me. In Eastern Christianity... It's not about me. It's about the community. It's a communion way of life. It's about the family. It's about relationships and connections you have. Western Christianity is like rigid, like you think in a box. Eastern Christianity, you have to be flexible. And not only flexible, you have to be so fluid and go with the flow. This is how Jesus done it. He went with the flow. Western Christianity is very formal, without many customs. Eastern Christianity, informal, with many customs. Many, many customs are important. Western Christianity values mind and thought. It's intelligent. It's all about how to make sense. The Eastern way of thinking values the heart and the emotions. We are more emotional. We are more hearted people. We think from our hearts and not much from our minds. Western Christianity is very theoretical. But Eastern Christianity is based on action. Action-oriented. Western Christianity is timely. You have to come on time as respect. But Eastern Christianity, as I said, it's improvisational. It's go with the flow. You never come exactly on time because you don't know what's going to happen to you at that moment. You just go with your emotions and feelings. So this is a gap between Western Christianity and Eastern Christianity that when you come to visit the Holy Land, you will learn about it.
and you will experience it in different ways. Let me explain more about the differences. The indigenous Christian communities also differ tremendously in their history. These historical differences impact the perspective of Christians from these communities even till today. Western Christianity was integrated with national governments, even ruling over large sections of Europe at times. This produced a more hierarchical-oriented Christianity, and one which naturally thinks in an institutional way. Eastern Christianity began with almost 400 years of persecution and attempted to survive under various ruling nations and people. This produced a community oriented in relationships. Now, both are important, Eastern way of thinking and Western churches. And both Western and Eastern churches have valuable natural strengths. And Twin Stores, our role, would like to help each side to be aware and understand and ultimately appreciate those strengths. We recognize that our rich indigenous Christian heritage and culture, utilizing the Aramaic and Hebrew sources of scripture, can be an asset to Western churches. Twin Tours serves as a natural bridge because of its connection to Messianic Jews, Orthodox Jews, Arab Christians, Arab Muslims, and Western Christians. We want to help others build bridges in personal interaction in so many ways. A bridge to become strong, everyone has to step on it. And everyone steps on the Arab Christians. But it makes the bridge stronger and stronger and stronger. And I would like to share with you three main ways how we as Arab Christians are bridge. We bridge to the Western Church. We bridge to the Arab Muslims. We are a bridge to the Jews. Through us, as indigenous Christians, you can reach all these communities. A bridge, by definition, is a two-way connection. A weak bridge cannot handle a heavy load. Similarly, a weak relation bridge cannot handle heavy topics. And in order to bring true unity, we must be able to talk about the heavy concepts plaguing the Middle East. But we start building and recognize not all relational bridges are ready for the weight of some issues. We appreciate any and all bridges as they do represent an awareness, understanding and appreciation of the others to an extent. We are talking about heavy issues that the churches have to deal with in order to become real and bring the unity of Christ between Western churches and Eastern churches. Let me give you an example and share with you how you can start to be a bridge. Because every relational bridge comes down to a personal connection. To this end, Twin Tours fosters personal connections between tourists and local communities. The type and depth of connection is dictated by the size of the group. So we have different kind of interactions. First, ministry groups. For groups of 10 to 15 people, these groups get hands-on with locals, often in their personal homes. We send them one by one to visit and sometimes stay in the houses of the people if it's a small group, to experience and have personal connections with Palestinian Christians or with Jews. Second level, interaction. For groups of 26 to 50 people, these groups visit local churches and local ministry environments. We take them to an Arab Christian congregation to visit on Sunday, or we take them to a Jewish congregation to visit on Shabbat. And real and see the real interaction in the real indigenous believers in the land of Israel. Third kind of groups, I call them the exposure. 
For groups of 51 plus people, these groups are visited by locals who share about their lives and ministry and experience. We bring Jewish believers to the hotel. After dinner, we take a room and the Jewish believers share about their lives in Israel and the challenges they have. We bring Christian believers also share about their communities and we bring Muslims background believers to share with the groups so they get exposed to what is happening in reality to the body of Christ in the land of Israel and Palestine to learn what not in the news, to learn what the local body of Christ is passing through. And this is how you can become a bridge. The Western Church become a bridge with the Eastern Church. So let me explain more the differences between the ministry group, interaction group, and exposure group, and give you examples, three quick examples. A ministry group can have one or two nights maximum a homestay with a Palestinian family in Bethlehem or West Bank. They will enjoy the food prepared by the host and learn the village culture in a way that brings the Bible to life. They will hear the family stories and have fun learning from each others. In this way, they will understand the daily challenges of the family and build trust with each others and begin a lifelong friendship and relationships. Though many people want to do ministry in Israel and Palestine, we have found that pastors first need to build a relationship with the people, with the community, before doing ministry in order to be more effective. Because there are so many pastors that come and they say, we want to do a crusade. They do a crusade and they leave and they bring more damage to the local community believers than to build the body of Christ. It's way different than the Western church think. As I mentioned, you have to build relationships first before doing ministry. Number two, the interaction groups can have a Shabbat dinner with a Jewish family. They will learn about Shabbat and Jewish family values and the daily life in Israel. They will learn a Jewish perspective that will help the Bible come to them to life. The experience will probably stay with the group longer than the guide teachings at a given site because they met with local Jews, local families and understood about their Jewish culture. For example, an exposure group can have a Jewish rabbi meet the group for a lecture about Jewish-Christian relationships. Then, that same group can meet a Palestinian Christian farmer and hear his history and his story as well. Another option is to bring a Muslim background believer to share his testimony with the group. These experiences expose the group to a world they may not have been aware of previously. For those who want to minister to locals, they must have a relationship with local pastors and appreciation for the good in the culture. It is important not to give solutions until a relationship is established. In the beginning of a relationship, it is important not to judge, but just hear the hearts of the people who are hurt and need someone to listen to them. Please don't give solutions. We, they're not waiting for your solutions. In this way, a tourist can relate to the history and ancient lessons rooted in the Bible and also to the living stones. We read in 1 Peter 2.5 You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And you have to understand that we are all the living stones which are being built up together. Sometimes tourists forget the local believers who are living stones far more precious than the ancient stones of the Western Wall or Caesarea or Tel Megiddo. They are a holy priesthood with spiritual sacrifices and gifts to give. 
They are the continuation of 2,000 years of what Jesus started here in the land. There is a continuation of biblical events with events going on today in the land of the Bible. To bring the living stones into unity, the wounds of the past will need to be healed through reconciliation. Some of these wounds include the wealth of the Western Church, neglect and even complete ignorance of the Eastern Church, a Western superiority complex and indigeneity pride of the Eastern Church. It's so complicated and it's so deep, but when unity takes place, everyone gets healed. Clearly, the vision for unity has not yet been achieved. It has grown, but the vast majority of the body of Christ is still far from unified. What will real unity look like when achieved? The mutual appreciation we've discussed will result also in mutual blessings. There will be a cooperation between the different parts of the body, just like the eyes, the hands, the feet, and ears of our physical bodies work in harmony. Let me read for you 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 15 to 25. Verse 15. Now, if the food should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. Verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are un presentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment but God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each others so look the strength of one part of the body of Christ assists in the weakness of another part. If the Eastern Church is weak, the Western Church can strengthen the Eastern Church. And in history, when the Western Church comes weak, the Eastern Church can strengthen the Western Church and vice versa. The body functioning properly is a healthy whole and each part is a blessing by being part of the whole body. In addition to mutual blessings, unity brings a testimony to unbelievers. Look what is written in John 17, 20-23. I will read it for you. And later, about the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, 1-4. But let me read first for you John 17, 20-23. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the word may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the word will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. 
And let me read for you from Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in all tongues as the Spirit enabled them. In a land such as Israel, which is divided by politics, divided by different languages and tribal loyalties, unity of believers which transcends politics, language and tribal loyalties is remarkable to the unbeliever. The love of Jesus is given a stage which all can appreciate. The heart of God is not just that as many to be saved as possible in a general sense, like the West thinks. It's not all about being saved. It's not a generic love to mankind. It's a personal relational love and appreciation for the beauty of diversity. In the age to come, every tongue, every tribe and nation will come up to Jerusalem to worship God. Look what is written in Revelation 5, 9. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God. Persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. We serve Jesus as Lord. He cares for us, and he is our friend. But he is also our Lord. We serve him fully with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Our business is a ministry to build his kingdom. He is the king of that kingdom. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. Our vision for unity is such that we bend knees together and humble ourselves to be united under the name Jesus as our Lord. Twin Stores chooses to be a sustainable business rather than a donor-supported ministry in order to be a source of stability and blessing to others. God provides miraculously for hundreds of ministries in Israel, but our desire is to be a source of stable economic provision for the ministry done by our staff, as well as helping subsidizing groups who cannot afford to come otherwise, especially nowadays with the coronavirus that had hit since almost a year. But we have been so blessed throughout the years, and the government of Israel has been also financially covering all the costs and paying all the employees So we have been so much blessed, more than normal days. So, Twin Stores, once a year, we do a ministry group completely for free, as a tie. They don't have to pay anything. They just have to pay their flights and come to Israel. Also, we do something called familiarization tours. And... These tours are for pastors, which is also free to them. And on familiarization tours, we invest in the pastors for a week, teaching them how to lead groups on the ground. And these activities are only possible from the modest profits, from the unsubsidized tours and the books we publish. And... We are going to do another one in 2022 and I will be talking about it in later podcasts for pastors to come for free for a week or 10 days just to learn how to lead groups and how to lead their churches in the land of Israel. And another important part of the vision of Twin Stores is to send out ministers to bring the message of unity to others overseas. Currently, me, Andre, is in the United States. 
and I travel all over despite the coronavirus, and I teach in different churches. I'm based in Texas, and probably I'll be here till tourism will get back normal to Israel. But I'm enjoying my time here and talking to many pastors and teaching in so many churches. I've been here almost, almost now for five months. And I'm looking forward to finish one year as a sabbatical until tourism comes back. Let me share with you now about the local vision of Twins Tours. Twins Tours has always been looking to build up the local believing community by building bridges between Messianic Jews and Palestinian Christians and the worldwide church, of course. A service tour is an excellent opportunity for your group to take part in the day-to-day ministries of the living stones of this land and to experience firsthand what God is doing today both in Israel and among the Palestinian territories. The Holy Land is larger than you think. It's not only Israel. It's Israel, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria. And if I want to do more expansion in the New Testament, Turkey, Greece, and Rome. The heart of our vision is to be able to reach the forgotten Christians, people, especially in the heart of the West Bank. Your presence is a big encouragement for the Christians in the West Bank and Palestine, who are left and just to connect with them is a big deal. They are left out. One example is with some of the ministry groups that partner with us. They help in running summer camps through the churches of the land for even simply visiting Christian homes, for a dinner, eating together at their homes, and talking as well as also literally cleaning and painting their houses and visiting these villages and working together with the local communities and even through different municipalities. Though these are little things, but it means a lot for the Christian people. Living in villages in the heart of the West Bank and in the outskirts of Ramallah, for example, or another example in the Zababde Christian village nearby Jenin. There is almost no tourists get to there and is away from the normal touristic sites. These are off-beaten villages that no one reaches and not many Christians are able and are willing to do that. But... This unites the West with the East and they will find simple people who want just to live a normal life. Twins Tours will prepare and help the people from the West how to be sensitive to their culture as Palestinians have tight family relationships. For example, hugging is not encouraged as well as when staying at their homes to have marine showers that is very quick few minutes shower as water is scarce in the West Bank and they don't get water every day. They will find out even the Palestinian Christians don't have much but they are very hospitable and serve fresh healthy food, coffee and tea. It's a very welcoming culture and they will be greeted with something to drink and it is not nice at all to refuse the first drink. That will break the ice and not to ask immediately for the internet password, for example, when you first meet them. Only listening to these people and to their daily struggles is something quite big for them. Listen to their hearts, what they share. You don't need to agree with what they say, but be open-minded, as sometimes they are more open to foreigners because they find it safe to speak to people that are foreigners. Twin Stores will help the West learn more about the Palestinian culture. Even opportunities will rise to help them in olive harvesting. For example, as Palestinians are very good farmers and they have good folklore, culture, dancing, dabka, all of that. You will learn so much. This way, our pilgrims will experience more deeply not only the sites, but as well 
the living stones of the land. It is not necessary to agree with all, but try to understand each other's perspectives. Now, at the end, I will share with you about Twin Tours team. Twin Tours office staff looks forward to meeting you and doing our best for your group to have the best experience in the Holy Land. We pray that while you are touring the land of the Bible, you will have special encounter with the Holy Spirit. We are so excited that in the near future, you will be able to make this trip of a lifetime. I will start introducing the staff. First of all, it's me, Andre, and Marie Mubarak. I am with my twin brother, Tony, the co-founder and manager of Twin Tours, and one of the main tour guides. Marie, my wife, is the director of program and partnership development, and she has a heart to see visitors and pilgrims encounter the land and the people of Israel in a very deep, meaningful, integrity-filled way. My twin brother, Tony and Sousa Mubarak. Tony is the co-founder of Twin Tours and the main tour guide. He also helps manage the office when me is outside the country. Sausan, his wife, is an assistant in accounting and manages suppliers' payments. Tony and Sausan have two children, 12 years old girl and 14 years old boy. Tony loves studying, reading, and writing so that he can teach the Word of God. And Tony very soon will finish his book about the Christians in the Holy Land. I'm not aware of a book speaking about the Christians in the land of the Bible. So stay tuned. I will keep you updated when his book will be released. Sitrag and Sylvia Shemesian. Sitrag, it's a hard name I know. This is an Armenian name. Sitrag is the reservation manager at Twin Stores. He is so much gifted. He deals with all the hotel bookings, site reservations, and daily emails and communications with all the suppliers. He is a man of all trades, jack of all trades. He is so, so much gifted. Sylvia is Sitrag's wife, is the accounting manager, and oversees all financial transactions. She is so much detailed-oriented. That is, she is so perfect for this job. And both of them have a newborn child, almost now eight months old. And Sylvia is Andre Antonis and Albert cousin. She's our first cousin. Albert Mubarak is my younger brother. Albert is the logistics manager in the office. He communicates with drivers and guides and supports the whole office. Albert and his wife, Russia, have three children, two boys, six and a half, five and a half, and one girl, four and a half years old. Albert is the person who deals with all the maintenance. He is the handyman, and he is also a bus driver, and he b- drives twin stores, small groups with his minivan. And finally... The most gifted, Celeste Dabar. Celeste is the media project manager. And she is a licensed tour guide with a deep love for the land of the Bible. When she is not on tours, she is at the Twin Tours office creating physical and digital content to enhance and promote the business. Celeste is Sausan's Tony's wife, niece. And... I just wanted to share with you the names of all the teams to be familiar with. And as you notice, it's a family business. And being as a family business, honestly, it's so hard. There are so many challenges. But with the years, we learned each other's gifts. We learned with each other's strengths and weaknesses. And we've been sifted together. And we're passing through so much hardships, but the good results 
is that everyone is in his position now. Everyone know his gifts and everyone is flowing all with his really good positions and everyone is in unity together working to bring unity to the body of Christ in the land of the Bible. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening and learning about Twin Tours mission statement, learning about the vision of Twin Tours, and about the team members. Thank you so much, and God bless your hearts.